This one is about pressure and depth. So I've got the can here, it's called Release the Chimps. It's not quite gorillas, but I think it's pretty close. And there's a little bit of water in that, or a centimetre at the bottom or something like that. I'm going to heat it over my Bunsen flame here. So obviously you'll expect to see the water boiling in there. I want to get that really, really hot, really, really vigorously boiling. And what this is a really nice demonstration of is the difference between pressure in the air and pressure in a liquid. So as that water boils, it's obviously turning into steam. And what it's doing is it's driving the air out of the can. Driving all the air particles up and out of the can. So there's quite a low pressure inside the can now. And the moment I put that into the, the water, you see it crushes the can. So there's a much higher pressure outside the can than there is inside the can. So that means there's a resultant force inwards and the can is crushed. So that shows us that pressure varies with density because the water is more dense than the air. So just a little way into water, you actually get a real rapid increase of pressure. So what I've got here is a column of water and a pressure sensor. And hopefully we can see this. Initially it's reading zero. Well, it's reading zero, it's reading atmospheric pressure, it's treating that as zero. And um, we go deeper into the water and you see at about 10 centimetres, it changes to one. And this is in kilopascals, so it's 1,000 pascals. And then if I double the depth, you can see it changing to two. So at about 20 centimetres deep, you've got two kilopascals, 2,000 pascals. So that means 2,000 newtons on every metre squared at that depth, which is quite a high pressure. That means that you've got a high pressure outside and a low pressure inside, so it crushes the can. So most of the time the can doesn't get crushed because there's a balance between the inside pressure and outside pressure. There's an equilibrium between the two pressures. You'll have noticed this as you go up in an aeroplane, that your ears feel like they need to be cleared, feel like they want to pop because you've got a higher pressure inside your ears than you do outside. So there's an imbalance, there's no equilibrium, so you need to kind of, or swallow or chew, and you can actually make the pressures balance. And if you've done the opposite, if you dive down into water, maybe you've been snorkeling or scuba diving, you'll know that the deeper you go, the more it kind of hurts your ears, and you need to actually learn to blow into your nose, and it equalizes the pressure between the outside, which is then a higher pressure, than inside your ears. So I could do that as an experiment with a whole bunch more depths within my column of liquid and I'd get this relationship. What I could say would be pressure is proportional to the depth. So the deeper I go, more pressure I get. And if I, in fact I double the depth, double the pressure. And also I could find myself some liquids of known density. And I've kind of demonstrated that because, well, the air is less dense than this liquid. so. I could also find by experiment that pressure was proportional to density. So if I double the density of the liquid I'm submerged under, then I'd also double the pressure. And lastly, if I had the money, I could go to lots of planets with different gravitational field strengths. And I would find that actually pressure and gravitational field strength were also proportional. That would mean that I could write myself an equation be a very useful equation because I could work out the pressure at any depth, in any density, and any gravitational field strength. So this is our equation here. Pressure in a column of liquid or a column of a fluid is equal to the depth times by the density times by gravitational field strength. And remember, you need to remember this for GCC, G is always 10 newtons per kilogram or 10 meters per second squared. I hope that was helpful to you. This is Gorilla Physics where I'm hoping that you start to understand physics more, so you enjoy it more, so you get more confident, and then so you can do better in your exams.